So I am Josh Dobies. Um, I run product marketing for a few of the product lines here at Riverbed, Steelhead, Steel Fusion, and the new Steel Connect. I'm joined by Angelo Comacetto, who runs uh, is director of cloud services uh, within our product management organization. We also have Milan Bize, who runs product marketing for Steelhead, and Barat, who recently joined Riverbed, is uh, with our solutions marketing group. So for today, um, most of the time is going to be focused on Angelo actually showing you the new Steel Connect uh, solution. And I'm going to go through as quickly as possible a bit of context, right? So for viewers that are watching this separately, they can kind of get uh, the stage that is being set here. Um, and then we'll do a roadmap update, which we did last year. So we'll kind of tee that up at the end. So many people know Riverbed as the leader in WAN optimization. We've been doing that for over 10 years. And one of the key things that um, made us a leader in this space was a focus on application. So application performance is, our, is what we're obsessed with. And it was that obsession that allowed us to optimize application protocols, not just networking protocols. And so it was really about connecting users over long distance to their data and apps. And we did that better than anybody else. Um, that same obsession with applications and performance had us think about visibility. And in today's world where networks are increasingly autonomous and software defined, um, making sure that things are happening the way you plan them to be, visibility is becoming increasingly important. And as apps are moving into the cloud, the visibility you often lose that you had on premises before. So we've bridged many of those gaps in making sure that you have end to end visibility into cloud and uh, click to disk visibility uh, when you're looking at these autonomous software defined systems. And then for those of you in the room that also mentioned the infrastructure side, applications, again, there's a whole class of apps that still run locally in remote uh, offices. And so about half of corporate data still lives outside the data center. And so with uh, Steel Fusion and the software-defined edge, it's a unique capability that allows enterprises to secure all that data out of remote locations without compromising any local performance or availability. So what we're that has led us to have many large customers, 27,000 customers worldwide, you know, recognized in Magic Quadrants, WANOP, NPM, APM, many patents, uh, many large companies. We've been deployed in some of the most security conscious and um, uh, complex uh, networks in the world. So what we recently announced um, back on 26th of April and what we're talking about today is Steel Connect, which is taking us into this application defined networking space. And so for the first time with Riverbed, we're not just acting as an overlay to be optimizing um, uh, networks, um, but we're actually participating in the infrastructure itself. itself. So you could say that um, we've been, we're going from making networks better to making better networks. So uh, that's what's exciting for us in terms of this next phase. And it all works together as part of a unique platform for application performance. Let's quickly set the stage in terms of SD-WAN. What's happening, and I know you guys have seen some of this, but some of the viewers um, may not, uh, are still getting to know this, this emerging market, this emerging area. And we'll also pose this question, is SD-WAN really enough? Is there something more that the industry needs and wants in order to be cloud-centric uh, for today's world? Here's the quick rundown. Cloud. Cloud is causing applications to move not just on-premises, on but in the cloud coupled with this insatiable demand for bandwidth that is driven in large part by rich media and video, those two things are, are causing the need for people to look at more complex WAN architectures in their remote offices. So where things used to be simple, everything on premises connected with the same MPLS fabric, now you've got something that looks exponentially more complex in each and every one of your remote offices, blending internet broadband with traditional MPLS and trying to figure out how to manage that. And the whole point is that the tools and techniques that have been in the industry for the last 10, 20 years haven't really changed that much. And so now we've reached a point where it's untenable to manage all of these networks uh, the same, with the same approach. So hybrid WANs is really the straw that's broken the camel's back. And there's this huge disruption now that's going on in the networking space. This might have sounded like a bold statement to make, you know, even a couple few years ago. But this is exactly what's happening in terms of the software-defined uh, wide area networking uh, movement that's going on. And so this is emerging. We need a new solution. Um, it's all about virtualizing your networks and creating that layer of abstraction so that you can be more agile and efficient in how you manage these. And across all accounts, the, uh, the, uh, the adoption of this is going to be uh, quick. While we see it's still rather nascent, Gartner talks about 1% of enterprises have deployed an, uh, an SD-WAN solution today. In another few years, it will get up to close to a third of all remote sites for, for many organizations are running an SD-WAN. 
And there's good reason for it. You can provision uh, new sites and services much more quickly. You're going to see Angelo demonstrate just how powerful this can be with the Steel Connect platform. You can be more efficient in how you manage this and reliable in, in having multiple WAN circuits that can fail over more easily uh, in each of your remote sites. And of course, doing more with less, you know, reducing the cost of ownership, both from a WAN circuit standpoint, as well as the operational standpoint. And so on all accounts, we see, you know, IDC put out a couple surveys, less than 25% of people surveyed said they had no plans to do SD-WAN in the next two years. Everybody else pretty much said, yes, we're going to be moving to an SD-WAN architecture. And that's why they're forecasting close to $6 billion of spend uh, by 2020 uh, on an annual basis for SD-WAN, which basically eclipses the traditional branch uh, routing market. Now, we think that SD-WAN is just the beginning. And we think that there's something more. And I th we think you're going to see that as Angela gets into what Steel Connect brings to the table. We think that it's not just the wide area network that needs to be disrupted, but really networking. Um, so as you look deeper into remote locations, where users are connecting into their Wi-Fi access points or where servers or services are connecting into those local area networks. Or if you look at the cloud being a new home for infrastructure and applications and how do you unify the connectivity across all of that, that's the experience that we want to create. Um, so we have fun kind of contrasting the day in the life of you know, a network architect 20 years ago versus today. And clearly in our consumer lives, you can come up with all sorts of examples. You know, we used to hail cabs using um, you know, an arm and, and a hand you know, to kind of do something, or we'd pick up coffee at a local cafe shop. You know, today, we're using apps to do many of these things. You know, a lot of the music we listen to is incredibly you know, personalized and customized. But networking has not changed fundamentally for, for the better part of the last two decades. And so these arcane, inflexible, rigid, complex uh, mechanisms that we use that we're trying to translate these, in, these increasingly demanding needs of business into core infrastructure um, all too often results in a lot of frustration and holding business back, right? So while all these, their lives have changed quite a bit, um, there's one thing that they have in common, which is the same you know, old approaches to networking. And I just ask you to take a look at these faces because I think that the, um, the uh, creative team did a fantastic job. They're actually quite unhappy people, right? So, so, you know, another way that we think about the disruption that needs to happen, we get a lot of inspiration from what happened 10 years ago with Amazon. So believe it or not, it's been 10 years since Amazon introduced AWS. And this marked a point in time where the world changed from an infrastructure standpoint. If you were to roll back the clock even two or three minutes before AWS was launched, and you were to ask somebody in the infrastructure space, hey, look, we need you to spin up some servers and some storage. On a, on a couple of different continents and deploy some applications, we need that done by lunchtime, you just wouldn't have been able to do it, right? The speed at which you're now able to provision these things is literally hours, if not minutes, and anybody can do it with a credit card and, and an Amazon account. And so it's that same level of flexibility and agility that is, was an inspiration for the design of, of Steel Connect. And we see this same cloud-first mentality in every single other aspect of the market. So you see behemoths like Microsoft declaring themselves as cloud first, you know, mobile first company. Um, you see you know, Google, CenturyLink, the application space, Office 365, Salesforce.com. It seems like every other aspect of IT is racing to be the most cloud centric. But we just don't see the same thing in networking, right? And, and so this is what we, we think is an opportunity for business and for People you know, like Riverbed in, this, in, the, in our business of redefining networking. So here we go. So Steel Connect, right? That's the context that we were thinking about this. And we think that SD-WAN is an important, but just a stepping point into that journey. Um, and like I said earlier, it's, it's not just about changing the way you manage the edge of your network in that, in that wide area, but also looking deeper into that fabric. What if you could orchestrate the way that users and the policies that define the way that users themselves connect their devices over Wi-Fi you know, into those locations, right? What if you had the same orchestration engine that was unifying not just the wide area network and the remote LANs, but also these cloud networks where increasingly people are doing application development or hosting their own you know, internal applications for big data analysis? What if the policies that you had in terms of security 
application performance were ubiquitous across all of that. So that's one of the first tenets of Steel Connect. It's SD-WAN, but it's also remote LAN and cloud connectivity. So we think the future of networking is really going to be based on, and particularly distributed networking, remote networking, is going to be based on these three tenets. The first one is what I just described, connectivity. And here we were looking for things that are ubiquitous and unified. Um, and then the orchestration that you, that you use to manage these is business aligned in the language of business. So we think the new primitives of networking are going to sound a lot more like the language of business, application, user, location, you know, having a policy that can follow the user. You'll have, you'll have uh, Angelo uh, demonstrate, you know, users and location can change, right? But having policies that can dynamically respond to that, performance SLAs, security constraint. We don't think that networks need to be managed in the arcane primitives of layer two, et cetera, you know, DSCP tags, VLANs, uh, and whatnot. The last tenant is around cloud-centric workflow. And this, I think, is probably the most the, the part that is most in, uh, was most inspired by what we saw with uh, infrastructure as a service with Amazon. The idea that you should be able to design everything about your network literally before you deploy even a single appliance. So let's reverse the paradigm from one where you have to deploy hardware and bring it online so that you can configure it. Let's reverse that. Let's say that you can design your network. You can even define where appliances will be placed you can define everything about the policies that will enforce how applications and packets and security and segments are going to work in this network. And then you could basically create a shopping cart of all the hardware, ship it out there, plug it in. And that's not step zero or step one, but that's the last step. And as it comes up, it inherits all of those policies. Right? Once you have that in place, obviously spinning up new sites and services becomes just a variable cost. So designing first, then deploying and changing with these, and Angelo is going to go through that as well. So in terms of what Steel Connect is, right, in terms of the actual product family, um, it's a line of secure WAN gateways. There is embedded native uh, firewalling and threat protection capabilities in each of the SD-WAN gateways. There's a unified orchestration that also covers local area network switches and Wi-Fi access points. There's the ability to click uh, and single-click connectivity into cloud infrastructure like AWS. We'll be adding Amazon, uh, uh, Microsoft, Azure later this year. And all of that is managed with the same uh, management interface that Angela will demonstrate. Later this year, from a roadmap standpoint, and I'll talk about this at the end, we're going to be extending the secure uh, gateway line with an extensible line. You might have heard us talk about Project Tiger last time that unifies WAN optimization along with SD-WAN and support for third-party services. And I'll also reference a lot of work that we're doing in the data center. We think that a lot of the battle from a, a vendor standpoint in this world is going to be based in data center uh, acumen and how easily you can in, um, integrate into some really complex networks and still manage to steer traffic based on policy in a secure way. And I'll talk more about that in a bit. So at this point, I'm going to tee up Angelo is going to go through this, and what you're going to see is this new face and experience of networking, right, that looks and feels a lot more like our consumer lives, where you can design everything up front, you can use languages like applications and users to create your policies, so that natural language primitives can be used to actually automatically enforce what's going on into a network, and single click to bring into cloud. All of that, because these touch points are not just stopping at the WAN's edge, but going deeper into remote and into cloud, it means that this promise of agility and operational efficiency of software-defined networking can truly be realized.